all fixed and we can leave the first thing in the morning. Yeah, it works just great. Watch. Gilligan, come back here with that. Welcome to Not My Reality. I'm your host as always, Vince Stradamus. Strap yourselves in, everyone. We're going to have a fun one today. We're, we're sure most of you have at least heard of Gilligan's Island. Perhaps, perhaps, you've even partaken in watching. Now, Gilligan's Island is an American sitcom. It aired for three seasons on CBS from September 26, 1964 to April 17, 1967. The series follows the comic adventures of seven castaways as they try to survive on an island where they're shipwrecked. Most episodes revolve around the dissimilar castaways' conflicts and their unsuccessful attempts to escape their plight. With, of course, the ship's first mate, Gilligan, usually being the one responsible for their failures to get off the island. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. Gilligan's Island ran for 98 episodes, and I gotta be honest, after we watched all 98 episodes, we hear it not my reality, we're left with one burning question. Is Gilligan the devil? <laughs> Hold on, I, I'm, seriously, follow me here. Is Gilligan the devil? Is the island hell? You know, the castaways representatives for the seven deadly sins. <laughs> yeah, what the, am I talking about, right? Well. Like I said, strap your ass in, and let's take a look. Is Gilligan the devil? It's a parody. If you don't have a sense of humor, go f Welcome. Is this my reality? Is this your reality? The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three hour tour. A three hour tour. Alrighty then, let's check this out. During the show's three year run, like I said, 98 episodes, the island's inhabitants, the castaways, they attempted to leave the island by broadcasting radio messages. They were sending smoke signals. They tried to repair the minnow. They were building a raft. Look, they even fixed a deep diving suit to permit Gilligan to get this walk along the ocean floor back to Hawaii. They were visited by headhunters, a wayward transatlantic stunt pilot, the astronauts in a returning moon capsule. A television special brought the entire Harlem Globetrotters to the island. Yet, despite all this, the castaways were strangely unable to get off the island, apparently doomed to spend eternity in each other's company. The weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the middle would be lost. The middle would be lost. But this is where it gets fucking crazy. We're taking a ride to Crazyville right now. Gilligan's Island turns out to be a deeply symbolic story of the limitations we take upon ourselves when we fall victim to human frailties and sin. Vince Damas, where are you coming up with this? What are you talking about? Hey, the creator of Gilligan's Island. Sherwood Schwartz, the man himself, reportedly created the show with each character representing one of the seven deadly sins. If you disagree with me, call Sherwood up. Well, he's probably dead now, but hey, he said it. Now, the great lesson in the series is that one who is controlled by these sins remains stranded, abandoned, and incapable of achieving release until the sin is overcome. With the island, the island is a direct representation of hell. Think about it. Nobody on the island wants to be there, yet no one are able to leave. Each one of the characters truly represents one of the seven deadly sins. So what character represents what sin? Let's take a look. The ship's a 
brown on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan. Oh, Gilligan. All right, all right. We're going to keep Gilligan. We're going to talk about him at the very end because you're not going to believe who Gilligan really is. The Skipper, too. The first of these sinners is the Skipper. The Skipper, he he's so big, he represents two sins. Gluttony. I don't need to explain that, do I? And the other sin of wrath. The Skipper, dude, had a hair-trigger temper. And he mostly aimed it at Gilligan. His anger normally saw him take off his hat and stomp on it, which to me makes a lot of sense. This is allegedly seen to be a possible insight in how we mostly hurt ourselves in our displays of anger. You know, you get mad, you punch a window. But let's be honest, the skipper beat the living out of Gilligan so many times. I mean, if, if this series happened today, I have a feeling Gilligan would know a little uh, MMA, a little, a little octagon training. He would he would choke Skipper out for that bullshit. But anyway, let's go on. The millionaire and his wife. Then we have the Howells, represented by Thurston Howell III. Now, this dude represented greed. That's him. This wealthy, entitled guy used his money to divine himself and actually exert his power to get this in a place where money actually had no value. And I don't care because this actor was Jim Backus, Mr. Magoo himself. Oh, Magoo. <laughs> Love that dude. And his wife, his wife, Mrs. Howell, she represents sloth. Because <laughs> that woman has never lifted a finger to help anything that they've ever done on that island. Yeah, love you. You brought a lot to the table. Movie star. The movie star, Ginger. Look, Ginger represents lust with a capital L-U-S-T. She wears skimpy outfits. There's not even anybody around. She's obsessed with her looks. And to be honest, kind of comes off as a borderline nymphomaniac. It, yeah, that was okay on TV back then, so quiet down. I always thought Marianne was hotter anyway, but we'll get to her. And the rest are here on Gilligan's Island. So during the first season, Marianne and Professor, they were just known as the rest. It's all just the rest. They eventually got credit, but anyway, let's get to Marianne. Mary Ann, she represents the sin of envy because for some reason, she's jealous of Ginger's beauty, even though she's a hottie in her own right. We all know that. And then, then we have to meet the saddest of the castaways, the professor. The professor's sin is pride, one of the worst of the seven deadly sins. Think about it, who knows what the professor's name was? Don't Google it. Cut it out. No Googling. Do you know his name? Well, the lesson is, I really didn't have a name. Only a title. The Professor. After years of isolation with his fellow castaways, they only knew him by a title. They only called him The Professor. They never knew this dude. I don't think they cared to. He only disclosed his accomplishments and his title. The Professor. But none deeper. I mean, he could build a radio, a boat. He built a whole lot of shit. But the professor, he couldn't get him off the island, no matter how hard he tried. And this leaves us with Gilligan, the little buddy. Going back, Gilead, he's actually the person who crashed them on this stupid island. And he prevents them from leaving by messing up every one of the ways they decide to get off the island. Also, it's his island. It's Gilligan's island. Is Gilligan Satan? You're crazy, right? God does wear red in every episode. This provides an interesting twist to our traditional view of the devil, too. People normally view him as aggressive, cunning, 
a diabolical creature who's clearly out for our spiritual demise. And you got Gilligan. Gilligan is the devil. Presents himself as likable, affable. He's kind of goofy. He's a poor soul. You kind of feel sorry for him. And he's accepted in spite of his constant ability to fuck everything up. Any plan to achieve freedom and get off the island? Gilligan? It's not going to happen. Alrighty, we we had a lot of fun with this one. It kind of has me looking at these episodes in a much different way. Like, when you realize the movie Signs, it's not about aliens at all, but it's about demons. Yeah, but go back, watch it again, check it out. What are you all thinking? Was Gilligan's Island just another zany 60s, 70s TV show with a ridiculous premise? Or, like this show's creator allegedly said, is the island a representation of hell? Are the castaways the seven deadly sins? And is Gilligan in red? Is he Satan? Please, leave a comment down below. Let's get the fuck out of here. Someone said there's two dicks in Bewitched. I gotta check this out. I'll see you there.